As for the question, my son has been instructed by a science teacher at school to do a presentation on the creation of the solar system. His science teacher specifically wants him to reference the Big Bang theory or supernova in his presentation. My question has three parts and I'll answer two and allude to the third. I need to help my son with this presentation. What do you advise I do? Number two, this belief, although erroneous, would appear in his end of year exam. So should he just learn it for the sake of passing the exam, knowing it's falsehood? Then I advise the brothers and the sisters, also the parents, that it is important that we learn and understand the Islamic position as it relates to any subject that we are going to face in our worldly studies. Or we equip our children to face these topics with a correct understanding of the Islamic position before these topics are presented to them. Yes, in many countries, a person will face certain topics like Darwinism in the curriculum. In biology, for example, or other subjects that go against what we find in the Quran and the Son of the Prophet. So it is imperative that we understand the Islamic position as it relates to these things. Like Darwinism, we know, clearly goes against the Quran and the Sunnah. It's a rejection of the Quran and the Sunnah because in the Quran, Allah informs us that He created Adam from earth and mankind, they came from Adam and Eve not monkeys. And Darwinism is a theory that lacks evidence, opposes the text revelation, opposes the fitra, opposes sound logic. It's flawed anyway, even from a scientific point of view. That we equip our children with the correct understanding as it relates to these topics. That is very important. We do not throw them into the lion's den We don't leave them unprepared, rather we equip them. Allah. That is vital. And there was an excellent website by our brother Sheikh Amjad Rafiq Havidahullah about atheism.net. And I'll put the link inshallah ta'ala in the group where he addresses the doubts of the atheists and agnostics and a number of the prevalent theories or arguments that they use. Rubbishing their false claims and highlighting their weak arguments based upon the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah in accordance to the way of the Salaf because some people they try and refute certain ideas with ilm al-kalam, rhetoric of the people of innovation, and it causes doubts as it relates to certain matters of the religion or certain positions that a person should hold in the religion. Now, secondly, if a person has to study a topic like Darwinism in biology, for example, that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah. Then when talking about it, we always talk about it in the third person. They say, Darwin said, Naam, and we benefit Habidukum Allah. This approach from the book of Allah Azzawajal, and this is a benefit that was highlighted by Sheikh Saleh al-Sheikh. And because in the Quran, when Allah informs us, for example, of the statement of the kuffar, the disbelievers, He said, They say Allah has taken a son. Subhana. 
Rather to him belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. And everything surrenders in obedience to him. Now they said Allah has taken a son. So if we are asked an exam question, we do not say I say. They say, Darwin said. If it's possible in a project, Nam, if a person has to do a presentation and they can show the flaws in the Big Bang theory, then highlight the flaws if there's an opportunity to do this. If it's in an exam and they want, for example, a person to discuss the Big Bang theory, as I said, they say, this person said, ascribing it either to the individual who holds these false beliefs or as a third party. Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for success and may Allah protect our children from being influenced by anything that would harm them in this world and the hereafter. Wa jazakumullah khairan. Wallahu a'lam.